Hello, we're at the Wallace Collection in London. Today, our nine artists are here to paint three outstanding actors in shows as varied as Game of Thrones and Hunger Games. You know, we should call this programme Game of Tones. Oh, yes, I like oh, it. Oh, it's good. But it isn't called that. This is a brand new series of Sky Art Portrait Artists of the Year. Over the next eight weeks, some of the most talented artists from Britain and Ireland are coming to showcase their talents. I've been just constantly just painting in my head. Even last night, I couldn't even sleep. I, can, I think I was just dreaming painting. In front of the public, they'll have just four hours to paint the portraits of some very famous faces. How does it feel? It feels good. I'm going to do this a lot. Is that OK? Oh, no, that'd be wonderful. Do you want to look noble, interesting, quirky? I mean, yeah, you were taking notes on those. those <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The reason they're putting themselves under such pressure? A possible life-changing prize. A £10,000 commission to paint the portrait of broadcaster Graham Norton. It will hang in the permanent collection of the National Gallery of Ireland. Someone came up to me and said, Bill's about to start waxing. About to wax. <laughs> I nearly arrived in a robe. <laughs> But just who wins the prize is up to our judges. Award-winning artist Ty Shan Schierenberg, art historian Kate Bryan, and independent curator Kathleen Soriano. It's great. I think they're brilliant, actually. So, from today's nine artists... Every brush I put down, I'm kind of excited, but also terrified at the same time. Who will be the first to make it to the semi-final? So your measurements are all instinctive. Which can go horribly wrong. Well. But it'll be great television. OK, perfect. <laughs>
is a portrait chosen by just one of the judges, and today it's Kate's choice. I love it. I'm so pleased I chose it. The combination of all these different patterns and colours, the stripy fence, the kind of lawn going into the background. What's so not see, to like? Seeing it in the flesh, it's much bigger and more monumental than I thought it was when I saw it on screen. I have to say, it's very nicely painted <laughs> in, a, in a sort of dry, <laughs> unflashy sort of yeah. way. Divided into three groups of three, the artist will have just four hours to paint a portrait, striking enough to win them a place in the semi-final. And for some today... Even more brushes. <laughs> ..they've come extra prepared for the challenge ahead. I thought, better safe than sorry, you never know. So I brought the whole studio, the whole kit and caboodle. This box, it was my granddad's box. He made it himself. He was an artist as well. It's been a bit of a family heirloom and I thought I'd bring it along for luck. Amateur artist Michael Roberts lives in Aberystwyth with his wife and two young children. After studying for a PhD in fine art, he now works as the university's IT manager. His self-portrait is in coloured pencil, which enables him to capture the fine detail of the skin. The four hours to me seems like a very short amount of time because I normally spend six months to a year painting things. With canvases prepped and paintbrushes poised, the only thing the artists are waiting for is their sitters. I haven't painted any famous people at all, ever. Just, I've just painted family and friends and a few enemies. The ideal sitter is somebody that is very still and perhaps a uh, very beautiful woman. <laughs> so, artist, your sitter today is an amazing actor. He was in The Lovely Bones, he was in Hunger Games, he was in The Devil Wears Prada. You are very lucky because your sitter today is the brilliant Stanley Tucci. <laughs> As if being a huge Hollywood star isn't enough, Stanley Tucci's varied career has seen him direct films, own a restaurant, and even write a cookbook. <laughs> Stanley, it's Frank. Uh, fabulous to have you here. What are you looking for in this? Are you looking for some grand portrait that will be above your fireplace? Oh, without question. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I just love images of me. Yes, me too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you, have some you. In, you have some in, in your <laughs> I house. I have a few. I think you're on my screen saver. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I used to draw and study drawing, and I'm just fascinated by the process, always. There are two types of sitters on this show. There are ones who can't resist having a bit of a peep, and the ones who hold back for that special moment of revelation. Which one do you think you'll be? Uh, it would be very difficult for me not to peek. Mm. Yeah. Try not to look really disappointed. OK, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll act. <laughs> You're so good at that, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Artist, your sitter today doesn't shy away from drama on either stage or screen. Please welcome Indira Varma. <laughs> Actress Indira Varma has gripped audiences as a murderer in what remains a victim in Luther, and out for revenge in Game of Thrones. Thank you. Now then, this is going to be an interesting day for you. Yes, it's interesting, the idea of being an actor sitting here. I'm not going to be conveying anything or communicating particularly, not in an active way. You don't think you're going to be acting a sitter? No. I, well, I'd like not to be. I'm really curious to see what you will see with me not doing anything. Artists, your sitter today is an amazing actor who made his screen debut when he was 12 months old. Please give him a big welcome. He is Freddie Highmore. <laughs> Award-winning actor Freddie Highmore spent his childhood acting alongside Johnny Depp in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Finding Neverland and now stars as a crazed teenager in the hit thriller series, Bates Motel. Do you own any um, paintings of you? No, I, I, and I have never sat for anyone before. I think it's a beautiful thing to have, and one of these paintings will be yours, and at, later today you will have the terrible choice when you will break two hearts simultaneously. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't apologise in advance. <laughs> 
Also, don't look at a particular artist when you say so. I it's try as to, if you to know. Look, I try to look at everyone. It's as if you know yeah. already, you think, well, that one won't be very good. <laughs> So can I say, what would you really like from Freddie today in an ideal world? Is that the way that you would sit is if you were at home? Or? Yeah. I like the leg up. I don't the know if that's going to be good. too... I could see you better if you, you weren't wearing your glasses. Do you want these without black? Well, well I, prefer, I, prefer, I, don't know, I don't know about them. I would personally, but it's up to you. I mean, if the glasses are, me, yeah. are who you are, then where yeah, I don't have to see you do. That's very true. That's very true. So are you ready to be the sitter? Yes. Yes. Good luck to all of you. Thank you. Artists and sitters, your challenge is about to begin. You have four hours to complete your portraits, and the time starts now. You're seeing all my defects, my spots, my wrinkles. Quite liberating, oddly. She's fantastic. Strong features, very big contrast between the hair and the skin tones. We've got a beautiful woman, and uh, I'm happy <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what we got. Michele Del Campo is a professional artist. He completed his master's in fine art at the University of Milan before moving to London to teach and paint. Michele enjoys creating stories in his work, as in his self-portrait entitled The Fall. In your submission, I can't see your face, so to what extent do you think it's a genuine self-portrait? Uh, it is not a self-portrait of appearance, but uh, it is a self-portrait of uh, situation. I prefer to uh, see myself through other people's uh, faces. So will we see this today? Will we see an element of self-portrait in the portrait? Uh, we always see an element of self-portrait in all the paintings that somebody does. The artist can choose any medium, but most of today's competitors have chosen paint. And one artist is enjoying the flexibility provided by using oils. Can I tell you that from over there, I thought, ah, oh, Kimberly's using watercolours. You're obviously not doing that, but you've taken on a sort of a whispery, <laughs> light, shimmering, Style. It might be a little too whispery. I do tend to be a little bit romantic, so okay. I don't think I'm going to be able to get rid of it completely. Please <laughs> don't fight romantic. <laughs> New York-born Kimberly Klaus lived in Tokyo and Germany before moving to London with her husband. After making a career in product design, Kimberly decided to commit to life as a professional artist only three years ago. So what is the next stage for this So portrait? I'm trying to um, work out some of the proportions in his face because I think he has a really sort of the distance between, let's say, his mouth and his chin. Do you do that thing that you see artists do when you hold up the don't. brush and do that measuring? I don't do that that much. Maybe I should every once in a while just to be sure because sometimes you go a bit blind after looking at it for too long. Yes, so your measurements are all just instinctive. Yeah. I which respect can go, you for that. Which can go horribly wrong. Yes. <laughs> so we'll, we'll it, see. But it'll be great television. OK, perfect, <laughs> perfect. When starting a portrait, there are no hard and fast rules. While most plot out the whole figure first, one artist has begun with a single feature. Charlie, I'm used to people starting all over the place and getting there, whereas you started with the nose and you're working your way out. Is that how you usually work? That is how I usually work. Um, I would usually be going a lot slower than this and paying much closer detail to every part, try and get it right, and then move on and spread out. After studying fine art at Brighton University, Charlie Schaefer moved to London and now works as a professional portrait artist. Having reached the short list of his heat in the last series of Portrait Artist of the Year, he's come back with new determination to face today's challenge. So do you think we'll see that playfulness that you sort of introduced in your submission? 
I hope so. I'm trying to actually play around with what you can do within a picture as well and trying to make them exciting for me because if it's not exciting for me, then it's not going to be exciting for anyone else to look at as well. You find a very nice grey mm -hmm. there. Yes. It's, it's a great start. It's very good. The artists have been working for almost an hour. I'm a bit worried I might have made him look a bit older than he is. As I paint into it, perhaps those lines will be softened and he might get his youth back. At this point, things are looking <laughs> wonderfully. When things start going well, you get more nervous that you might muck it up, and that's when things can go really wrong. Battling it out for a place in the semi-final, our nine artists have been painting actors Stanley Tucci, Freddie Highmore and Indira Varma for nearly an hour at the Wallace Collection in London. While most artists paint the colours they see in front of them, one is interpreting them in a highly original way. Tell me about the black, because you, you've ignored the black slightly. There's so many colours being reflected um, that I'm getting very excited because all of a sudden, oh, I really want to add that bit that. So I'm mm. trying to pack quite a lot of responses in. Charlotte Baines worked in childhood development before becoming a professional artist. After falling in love with the south of Spain while on holiday, she now divides her time between there and her home in Kent. You've probably got more paint on than anybody else at this stage of the day. Are you kind of confident that you can not put too much on or that you can just get it on there and play around? I seem to want to do that today. This is my response mm. and I'm sort of trying to go with it. I'm getting a very kind of Matisse vibe <laughs> from it. This lovely, all these brilliant colours. I think that's a really interesting bit of painting. Thank you. A critical element in any portrait is the angle chosen by the artist. It already looks sort of monumental. Monumental? Yeah. You know when they find these enormous heads in Egypt? Yeah, I'm looking from below. So okay. that's why it's got to look exactly like you're looking yes, at a sculpture. Exactly, because if I'm, looking I'm sitting an enormous, down and I'm looking yeah. up. Slovakian Marek Dukta is a professional artist who lives in London with his six-year-old daughter. His self-portrait took two months to paint, using tiny marks of red, green and blue oil paint to replicate a digital image. So what's the philosophy behind the, that pixelated look? That's really how we see each other these days, on screen, on mobile phones, on everywhere. It's all pixels. There's not really a reality. It looks real. Okay. Not if you zoom it, it's everything built from those uh, red, green and blue so, colours. So is it a criticism of that? Of Not that necessarily. Way of yeah. It'd be slightly hypocritical but as you're working from an iPhone picture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can I ask you one other thing? Is it true you were born on a train? Yes, it is. Yeah, I was well, born is it on a, a train. moving train? Yeah, moving train, yeah. It went to another town. OK. In Czechoslovakia. Do you think that has an effect on your psychology that you were... You weren't born in one specific place, you were... <laughs> I don't know about psychology, but I'm sure it has some effect on me. I don't want to distract you, you know, I'd love mm. to just have a chat, but I feel like I may just... Um... Then you get caught up chatting and yeah, not painting exactly. and stuff, yeah. I don't want to be to blame if you don't get it finished. <laughs> like, well, Freddie was talking to me too no, much. No, we won't so. <laughs> So what do you think about Freddie as a sitter? Well, you know, sometimes the artists complain, don't they, if they get someone young and handsome because they, they haven't got enough craggly things yeah. to get into. But um, I think he's got quite a gravitas to him, despite his youth. Yeah, I think that what they'd ideally like is one of those Bolivian peasant women you get on the front of National Geographic magazine. Mm. So you can work for hours on every line. Yeah, and they're hard to track prayer. down in London. When he arrived today, I thought, I'm quite glad he's gone for it. The, the light beard. That's yeah. given, at least given them something to, to, to work on apart from just that shiny youth. Mm. Mm. 
she's chosen to wear black from head to toe. That's quite a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, but she's got this fantastic background behind her, all those rich colours. I think the costume, for me, shouts actor. It's, it's lovely. It's so dramatic. It's so dramatic. It's a bit of a gift, really, for the artist in some way. <laughs> Bare feet. I don't think the bare feet will figure, which is a pity. It is a pity. But again, she knows she's got bare feet, and that will affect the way in which she's sitting and the way in which she's presenting herself. Stanley's wearing a grey suit and a black shirt against a grey background. They're all different greys, though. I believe there are 50 in total, <laughs> oh, 50 there? shades. That's, that's what I've heard, <laughs> yeah. So both Charlie over there and Kieran have made the greys very blue, so it's good for the artist because it's adaptable, whereas, you know, a bright orange or a per strong colours are kind of very difficult to work with. As I said, uh, um, Stanley is a gift. His face is so animated without him knowing. He also gets a great range of expressions that you can include. Amateur artist Kieran Meehan lives in Glasgow. He enjoys capturing expressions in faces and was keen to include the whole figure in his self-portrait, which was painted in his favourite chair at home. You work as a, for cartoons? I'm a cartoonist. cartoonist. Uh, I have a set of comic strip, a daily comic strip for uh, uh, syndicated in America, so... Uh, but it's very different from this, it's but, very different. But in a way, though, that, that skill must translate to it being does. able to capture lightness pretty quickly like it that. Must, it must do, but this was the original skill, and that translated to cartoons rather oh, than... Okay. The other way around. The other way around, yes. We really liked your submission because of the whole figure being in it, so we're very pleased you've uh, done that with Stanley as well. You're a cartoonist also? I am, yes, yes. Is it for newspapers or is it for...? It's for, it's for newspapers. Like syndicated? Uh, yes, it's a, it's a daily comic strip called, called Pros and Cons. Oh, really? Here or in, in... In America. In America. I have to look it up. I'm really pleased with the sitter. He's got nice shapes within his hair, which can be uh, echoed throughout the whole picture. David Douglas is an amateur artist who lives in Northamptonshire, where he teaches art and exhibits his work in local galleries. He was a contestant in the Landscape Artist of the Year 2015 and has come back hoping to impress the judges with his skills in portraiture. In your submission, your portrait had a lot of information in the background. With the self-portrait, we had the luxury of having as long as we wanted and we could bring in a narrative, all sorts of things like rusty old sheds and, <laughs> and rhododendrons. The focal point is the figure and, and here today. And that's the most important thing. For some, working alongside others is a new experience. So each artist is dealing with it differently. Charlie. Hello. <laughs> You've created your own private little world here. I love that is the kind of paint set I had when I was nine. Yeah. <laughs> I've had it like four years now, Have you? so <laughs> from when you were washed nine. it since. 17-year-old <laughs> Charlie Collins is an amateur artist from Boxton in Derbyshire and is the youngest artist in today's heat. More used to painting her pets, Charlie's submission was her first self-portrait and is in her favourite medium, watercolour. What are your difficult bits. I talk to portrait artists and they always say, not very good on noses or I'm not um, happy with ears. Do you have a bit mouths. where you, you slightly dread mouths? Yeah. <laughs> I've noticed the mouth is becoming steadily more downturned. <laughs> I've caught him smiling, so... Oh, he's got a beautiful smile. <laughs> you play ukulele, don't you? I do. And I play ukulele. Okay. <laughs> and generally, I feel that people who play ukulele is a good... People. I should have brought a ukulele along. I wish you'd brought it. I Two, wouldn't, and I would love to sit here <laughs> now and play together. Do you take a lot away or do you try and be careful about every single mark so you don't add too many. Mm, can take away a okay. lot, so I try to allow myself to make a lot of mistakes. 
to be not so fearful and be a little bold, and then I can always use the, the turpentine to just pull color back. Halfway through the day, and as predicted, Stanley can't resist taking a peek at his artist's work. It's an interesting technique. You do the, the drawing underneath, then you paint over it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. That's a great Thank idea. As long as everything comes together at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. It's great. Here at the Wallace Collection, actors Stanley Tucci, Indira Varma and Freddie Highmore are being scrutinised by our artists. But the judges are also scrutinising them as they form their opinions halfway through the challenge. So what about the three artists painting Stanley at the moment? Kieran started with a very nice drawing on the canvas and I thought, oh, here we go, you know, he'll start blocking in the paint. And then he sort of painted over <laughs> most of the drawing is it Stanley's hands, and now Stanley's appeared in that mess of paint. So that's been very exciting to watch. Yeah, and Charlie's doing a good job as yeah. well. Great characterful mm. head. Lovely little bits of paint here and there. It's great. Charlotte started with this explosion of, of colour. She has something very beautiful at the moment, facially. Yeah. For me, it was really great toward the end of the morning. And then there was way too much paint, and I was thinking, oh, it's going to end up a big muddy pond. And what she's done is refine it. Kim's work is really exciting. I think she's found a way of dealing with Freddie's paleness against his pale shirt and the pale background. Mm -hmm. But she's just darkened the background, and now Freddie's starting to pop out a bit. It's a beautiful painting, but we're waiting mm -hmm. almost for it to kind yeah. of come to life. And it's this time after lunch that I'm hoping that they all start to sort of ping. To create a perfect portrait, an artist needs consistent lighting. But the glass roof is presenting something of a challenge. The light is affecting uh, the painting quite drastically because the sun has now moved over that way, which means the shadows are pretty much entirely reversed from when we started. There's no real one way to resolve it, so I think the best one can do is just keep painting. You're starting to find definition in the face. Yes, I'm trying. The light has changed quite a bit. But in a good way or in a bad way? It could be like the light has changed and it's giving you more information. It is. It has helped me to understand certain shapes. OK. I just need to be unafraid to go and put those shapes yeah, no, in. No, no, no. I think there's things happening here. It's, it's looking yeah. very nice. Well, my dad was an artist and art teacher, so he would do sketches of us peri periodically. I used to be able to sit for a lot longer periods of time when I was younger without getting sore. Now I can't do that. I love the process. It's endlessly interesting to me, and they're also r really talented. So. It's intriguing. I just enjoy seeing all the people's faces as they go by and seeing the various reactions and trying to work out what they look like from that. I guess it will be interesting to see how my relaxed face comes across. You know, some people say, oh, your relaxed face is really angry or stony-faced or happy. So it'll just be intriguing to see how they think I'm feeling inside. <laughs> we make snap judgments about people when we first meet them. And I think the longer you sit with them, the more their face changes and the more you realise that, OK, like I've got a long nose and a long neck. Maybe I look a bit haughty, but that's not really my personality. So whether they see that, I don't know. Friends and family are a big support for our artists. And for Kimberly's parents, that's been no mean feat. Well, I can't believe how special this event is for you. Explain to me, Yvonne. And when she called and said she got in, <laughs> we got very emotional and said we had to be there. He said, we'll be on the next plane from Connecticut. So we got on the internet and booked the tickets. And, and you're married to her and you lived with it all yes. this time. <laughs> <laughs> Does it create a sort of tension, excitement, apprehension? Uh, happiness, I would say. I'm just really happy for her. 
your mum and dad have, have flown over from America yes, today. Yes, they have. That is, that, that is the most it's really gorgeous nice. thing. It's really nice. Does that make you feel sort of warm and that you've got something familiar here? Or do you feel slightly extra pressure? It's a long mm. way to fly to see you lose. It is long. <laughs> The artists have only 30 minutes remaining. Kind of excited, I think, is the feeling you get when you get near to the end of a painting. Every brush I put down, I'm kind of terrified at the same time. I was just thinking that it will be what it will be. I could easily work it and make it far more realistic, and, but actually, I don't want to lose that essence. Here at the Wallace Collection are nine artists are near the end of their four-hour challenge to paint actors Stanley Tucci, Indira Varma and Freddie Highmore. I'm adding some dark tones to the face. I am um, trying to define some areas. I did go back when the sun, when a cloud came through um, and worked out some areas along the cheek. Um, so I'm doing what I think I can in the time uh, left over. I'm watching you paint literally the last inches in. You've covered yeah. the entire canvas. Yeah, which I didn't do last time, yeah. You don't usually get a whole covered yeah. canvas. Yeah, I know, it's still very tight for time. Yeah. Artists, you have just five minutes remaining. Five minutes, I am. Bloody hell. I'm OK. Oh, <laughs> Is there anything I can do in 30 seconds? That's quick. A fingernail. Artists, your time is up. Please put down your materials and stand back from your portraits. <laughs> After sitting still for four hours, the time has finally arrived when Stanley, Freddie and Indira see the completed portraits and are allowed to choose one to keep. We have a very special moment now where the easels are turned and yeah. you see the pieces for the first time. But you have been studying the art throughout <laughs> the day. But I'm sure you can do a surprised oh, yeah, look. Yeah, I so let's, yeah. let's, Might have let's, to do a couple of takes, but... So, artists, will you please turn your easels? Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Here is Charlie's piece. Beautiful. Done really painterly, as they say. Good word. I really like it. If ever there's a job as a Bond villain going, you yeah. should send this for yeah. your application. <laughs> yeah. There is a menacing air about it, I think. Yeah. Fantastic. I can't believe you're 17? 17. 17. <laughs> That's extraordinary. Thank you. And you're working with watercolour, which is really not an easy thing to do. <laughs> yeah, and that's a delicacy about it, which yeah, is lovely, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. This is a different you, isn't it? I want to put my arm around this. Well, thing. go ahead. I think it's fantastic. I love the gesture of it. I mean, I love the outline and the solidity of it. Thank you. I love the way you painted it, too. You had the cartoon underneath, and then you put all the paint on top of it. It's really an interesting technique. It's beautiful. I love them all. I don't know what to do. I'm going to choose that. Well done. Good. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Well, they 
are very different. They are totally different, <laughs> aren't they? It's quite bold. It's just like, I'll oh, just go for it. Yeah. She's a very bold last. <laughs> I love the way that it's got that split in the background and it fades away. It's wonderful. This one's so lifelike. In a funny way, it reminds me of my dad. I don't know why. I look at it, I'm like, ah, oh, it's my dad's eyes or eyebrows. I guess the angle is the most pronounced on this one. Your attention is immediately drawn to that one eye as opposed to anything else. Well, thank you, all of you. Uh, I think I'm going to take Kimberly's one. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. So yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Indira, you were absolutely poised and present, I think, is the... Oh, good. Was it in any way an enjoyable experience? Yes, thoroughly enjoyable. This is the hell bit. Artists, can you please turn your easels? God. Wow. I think it's beautiful. There's so many colours, it's vibrating, it's gorgeous. It looks like really... a hologram from certain angles. Yeah. It's, it's part art, part magic trick. Yeah. Wow. Charlotte. God, it's completely different. It's full of energy. Totally got your personality in there as well. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And the eyes suddenly ping. Yeah. So a nice, easy choice, this I one. I don't know what to do. I will have to go for... Oh, I'm going to go for that one. While the artists take a well-earned break, the judges are left alone with the portraits to decide on a short list of three. I think she had a better likeness earlier on. I find the colours a bit overwrought. I started off having a problem with the colours and I thought, hold on a minute, they're true, apart from the yellow yeah. and then this orange. But she's used those to bounce the eye, you know, across yeah. and to bring you into the, into the face more. Mm. What I think ultimately she's done is create a really wonderful harmony. There is absolutely this wonderful energy of it all just hanging in space, just right. And sort of strange effect she gets around uh, the hands and when it starts running. It's like a solarized photograph. You get kind of, it's almost like an x-ray. There were some things that I was really like, should I, should I, and I didn't, and, um, and now I still want to. <laughs> It was fascinating to watch him bring this together. There's so much going on. There's all this information that's been painted over. I'm keen on the way he's focused again on the hands and the face, as he did in his submission. Is it a good likeness? I, it's strange. I, sometimes I think it's a Stanley that was there, and sometimes it's a Stanley that is out. I, I didn't mm. find... I'm not totally comfortable with the likeness. Mm. I like this. It's like a gloomy digital Mona Lisa. I mean, the expression is very sort of subdued, but sort of half smiling. It's... Yeah, I think there's something enigmatic about it too. There's definitely something that he captures. It's the stillness of it, I think. Yeah. It was a joy to watch this emerge from just the corner of a nose and it spread out. I like the inventiveness of his brush marks. Mm. He's made him look too old for me. I don't mm. know if I'd want my portrait painted like that, but I recognise it's a mm. very good piece of painting. I think I like it as a painting first and a portrait second. I don't think a painting should necessarily just be a likeness. I think it should be an interesting painting as well. Pop it through there. It's interesting that when you bring those ones in, how much weaker that one starts yeah. to look. Yeah. But who has made it to the top three? The first artist to be shortlisted is Charlie Schaefer. The second artist on the shortlist is Kimberly Klaus. And the third artist to be shortlisted is Karen Meehan. Commiserations to the... There were some fabulous performances by you guys today. Thank you so much. You did a great job. 
feeling very relieved now that it's over, if you like, because um, it's been a bit scary, but also still exhilarated. I've enjoyed it very much. As always, I'm intrigued to find out how the judges arrived at their shortlist. Can I just say, for me, yeah. the elephant in the room is when I sat next to Indira and those three artists turned the three portraits, I just thought this is one of the best moments I've ever had on this programme. So obviously the fact that none of them made the top three. At this stage, we're, we're looking at both at the submission yeah. and the portrait today, and we're thinking about the level of promise that they will bring going forward. All three of these have got unbelievably good submissions. It was a really strong day. Yeah. Now, Kimberly, we all liked when we looked at the wall. There was no question. Everyone went, wow. I think what's really magical about her paintings is the amount of information that your eye doesn't have. The sense of this painting kind of just existing on the surface really pulls me in. The level of suggestion is something that has to engage you in order to sort of work with the no, construction. I, I, I often walk past paintings during this um, competition and think, after an hour and a half, say, I wish you'd stop now. Mm. I, I like the slightly unfinished feel. The colours are still a little soft. I would have liked to add some bolder marks to anchor it a little bit. I think Kieran's picture of Stanley is terrific. It was mm. nice the different stages it went through. Yeah. Yeah. And he knew exactly what he was doing. He, you could see the confidence oozing from it and he just caught him perfectly. I think what's really interesting about the painting is that it, it did continually evolve and in many respects I think it continually evolves after it's finished. There are so many things I'm not happy with. I should have stepped back from the canvas more often. Charlie's a controlled, it was very measured, and actually I do think he talks about how he starts with the nose, and as he works out slowly, he does capture that sense of character. There's odd passages in it, but I quite like that. You keep coming back to it, and it never quite settles it's, it's or a, resolves itself. It's a beautiful painting, I think, yeah. If I were able to change anything, I'd probably think more about every stroke rather than just paint, paint, paint. Charlie, Kimberly, Kieran, congratulations to you all, but as you well know, only one can go through to the semi-finals and the judges have decided. Yes, the artists that they have decided, and I quote, took a refreshing original approach which showed tremendous sensitivity. And that artist is... Kimberly Klaus. I feel absolutely fantastic. I woke up this morning <laughs> and had no idea this would be the outcome of today. Um, I couldn't be happier. Kimberly's portrait is beautiful and a worthy winner. I had a lovely day today. I'm feeling happy that it's over. It's been pretty exhausting, so I'm just glad the day is kind of done. As an artist, you're often relying on yourself. Nobody's handing out praise, so it's a validation. It's a big deal for me. 